Okay, uh, so thanks for the first talk. Uh, not easy to make a presentation two days after a conference. Um, I will be talking today about Android TV and why it's important to stay focused um, and why it's important to stay focused on Flutter in general. So who am I? Uh, I'm Koo van Loveren. Um, I'm Flutter lead at iCaps and uh, I started out as an Android developer. Uh, so I'm using Android uh, at home on an Android TV and my smartphone is a Pixel 6 Pro as well Android. Um, I'm really passionate about Flutter uh, and I'm co-organizing uh, Flutter Belgium here as well. So, join. Uh, so what is focus? Uh, that is just it. Um, okay. So, um, what is focus? Google. Dun, dun, dun. So focus is, um, yeah, you should be able to use, for example, a tab throughout your whole, uh, your whole website, your application, uh, just to navigate because yeah, some people uh, need to use a keyboard instead of a mouse um, or there are other reasons. So this is focus in, in, in short. Um, but you would think, okay, but not everyone is using um, a keyboard on a mobile phone. But there is focus as well. Uh, for example, if you have an input field, you want to highlight maybe some text around it and not only just show a cursor where the text should be shown. Um, so, so it should be easier for the user to focus to a specific element and see, okay, that is what it is there where I'm typing my text. Um, and everything that I'm doing here is, is clear to the user. The user should not be able to uh, figure out himself where on the screen he's uh, altering data. Uh, but as well for accessibility, uh, so in Flutter, for example, um, if you want to yeah, scroll, to, uh, scroll through your UI, then you need to be able to focus certain elements of your screen. Um, so this is a screen reader where you go through certain elements on your screen, uh, and it would read out container 0, container 1, container 2. Uh, but if you don't have focus, if you, the elements are not focusable, then it would just not read anything, but it cannot yeah, you just cannot focus anything uh, on the screen. So focus is not only important on, on desktop, it's also important on mobile, and this is one of the main reasons as well. So another example here, um, focusing through, through a UI. So yeah, the, um, the application on the right, not an application that yeah, would be used quite often, um, but in the other case, you have a list item where you want to focus on a separate item in a certain, uh, certain UI element. So you need to make sure that focus is going to the right places. Uh, and you need to make sure that the travel where the focus is going to, that it is correct uh, throughout your whole uh, UI. So I would say, um, yeah, it's important on, on all uh, platforms and with Flutter we're building for multiple platforms. Um, from mobile, we started with mobile, um, desktop and web joint. TV is also possible, uh, and I will show you how you can do that. But I would say stop building for platforms. Don't build for Android, don't build for iOS, don't build for macOS, don't build for Linux, just build for UI screens. So it's easier to scratch out your UI. Um, it's easier to say, okay, uh, the UI needs to look on this screen. It needs to, it needs to look like this, if it's a tablet or a small, um, small desktop, it shouldn't, uh, shouldn't matter. Uh, you should implement the right actions and the right user uh, interactions uh, to make sure that the UI is uh, usable. And that is something that you should do with, uh, with focus. So in Flutter, uh, you should handle focus in a couple of, couple of ways. So a lot of Flutter widgets already have focus built in. So if you're using a list item, for example, it will have an on click, and the on click will have focus out of the box. So if you're using just material widgets, Cupertino widgets, they all have the right um, items, the right configuration in the widget itself, just to handle focus change. Uh, they will also look a little different because they're focused. Um, if we go maybe back a little to this, yeah, you don't want 
your UI to the general public to look like this if you're focusing. You want to have a beautiful UI with UI changes that look that looks really nice. So keyboards, keyboards uh, input listeners, for example, um, are also required to have focus because otherwise your keyboard, keyboard cannot focus to that specific element. Um, and you can handle the focus changes yourself as well if you want that. So why would you do that? In our case, we almost never use a list, uh, list item from Flutter themselves. We usually create that um, with yeah, a container, a size box, uh, columns, rows, etc., just to make sure that we have the full control over the widgets and it's not changing with material three, four, or 10 in the couple of years. Uh, we want to have our own ownership over the widgets. But that means that we also need to implement the focus sometimes ourselves. Um, so if you have um, an inkwell, for example, that is something that is specific to, uh, to Android that will handle the focus already. Uh, so that's something that we would use, but that's the bare minimum uh, or the, the maximum, I would say, um, as a Flutter widget that is provided by the framework. So in order to make sure that you have the right tools for the job, I would say use the focus node and focus scope node. Uh, the focus node is used on a specific element and the focus scope node is used for a larger group of elements that is in your UI. Uh, so as I said here, the focus scope will handle a specific widget uh, with one focus node per widget uh, and it's used already by a lot of built-in Flutter widgets. And the focus scope is something that you would use from a sidebar that is showing, a dialogue that is showing, where you want to have a switch between um, yeah, certain contexts of the, of the UI. Um, you don't want to switch between certain pages and then lose your focus there and it needs to appear there and it needs to yeah, go automatically um, by, by, by using the uh, focus scope nodes. Um, and I will sh show how you can implement that and what it's actually used for. So an example of a focus node here, uh, this is the counter app. Everyone knows the counter app. And if you look at the floating action button, uh, you don't really know if, if it's focused or not currently. So you could change the focus color. And if it's focused, it would change to this specific color. If it's not focused, it would just change back to the, uh, to the original color. In this case, we have only one element that is focusable uh, because it's a button that needs to be tapped there will only be one focus, uh, focus node in this UI. So a focus node, focus scope node uh, example is something like this. So opening and closing a sidebar, for example, on Android TV, um, where you say, okay, this is my UI, but if I press an extra button, I want to open an, an overlay and the overlay needs to handle the focus itself. And if you go back or if you go out of this focus, it would go back to the original state. So in this case, we would have two uh, focus scope nodes, one for this one, uh, this full UI, and then one for the sidebar. So I pre prepared a couple of demos, and let's see how it goes. Uh, on FlutterCon there were some hiccups, and let's hope it's not the case here. So, um, let's first start with how we should implement uh, an Android TV app. So if you run Flutter on Android TV, um, Android TV is just Android, it's just another screen, um, but you need to configure some implementation to make sure that you have the right UI elements, that everything is visible, um, that the launcher icon is there. So that's something that you need to do. So for example here, on Android you will have a launcher icon, Yes, like this. So the reason that it's red here is because I'm, um, I've opened the uh, Flutter, um, Flutter projects. If I would open the Android project, it would just uh, be normal. Um, but if you want to add support for, um, for Android TV, you would need a banner. And the banner is the icon that is shown in your UI. So in this case, let's go back. it would be these tiles. So 
I installed the application on this simulator, but you can't see the app for, for launching. So if you go to settings, for example, uh, let's see where it exactly is. Uh, shows. You will see that it's, it's here. There is a Flutter app installed on, on the device. If I open it, it will just open the application, but users don't want to go to settings to open an application. Nobody wants that, so you need to configure a launcher, um, a launcher icon, and you need to say, okay, this application is LeanBack supported, and LeanBack is uh, the support for Android TV on, on Android. So that's instead of a launcher intent uh, category. Let's see. You just need to enable LeanBack launcher support. And that's basically the only thing that you need to do, um, as well as setting the icon or, or the banner. And then if you say, okay, no, this application only needs to be able to install on LeanBack devices, then you can say, okay, I want to have a hard requirement on LeanBack, yes or no. Um, and you could even say, okay, no, my device cannot have touchscreen support, and then the Play Store will handle it uh, automatically. So, yeah, we don't actually need this. We just want to have it installed on any device, and this is how we can create one application that is be able that will be able to run on on Android and on Android TV without having a separate application um, in the in the Play Store. So let's see. One very important uh, item that you need to check if you're working with Android TV is that the simulator is always on the wrong time. So you see that it's 1306. That's always the case if you open a simulator and it's been like this for years uh, and they've never fixed it. So um, this is something that you always need to change because otherwise you can't do API calls and it would fail uh, in the OS. So. Let me change that. I changed it right before the demo and I launched the simulator and it's gone again. So, uh, of course. Okay, let's just switch to the next one and I will just show it there. So yeah, here you can see I've added a banner. Um, I've enabled the LeanBack support. Uh, I think I missed code somewhere or something like that. Uh, and then I set the requirement to false um, because it's not needed. So right now I have the next example, but if we look here, then we can see that we have a application that we can run. We can say, okay, I want this as favorite, so it will appear here as favorite as well. And then we can reopen it again. Um, I'm still debugging. So right now, if you look at the UI that I'm using, you will see that it's quite easy application, just a list view uh, with 20 items and an elevated button. So the elevated button is a material um, widget, so it has already a lot of uh, focus, implementation, everything is there for you. You don't need to do anything else. So if you want to use this application, you can just use tap to go to the next um, next focus node, or you can use your, um, your arrows. So let me open up the control here. Let me resize now. Okay, uh, so a little more. So you can yeah just use your your arrow keys uh, because the keypad on of, of a of a TV is just a keyboard listener basically. Uh, so you can just navigate through the UI um, 
and go to the next uh, focus node, the one that's above your item below or select one. You could also just go back and in this case we would uh, just close the application. So currently I'm not uh, still connected, okay. So if we add an extra list, Okay, now I can navigate through the UI the same way. I can use, I can use tab as well. And let's see, we will go to the next item in the focus, uh, focus uh, area. So if we are at button 19, for example, the next item will be the first item of the second list. So. We can also navigate with the buttons. It will go up, it will go down, uh, and everything will be done for you. Uh, so that's really easy, uh, and there's no way, or there's no need to have extra implementations if you're using just the material uh, UI. But let me switch to the next demo. In some cases, we in some cases we have a list where we want to go through, and if we use step, we go from left to right. But for this application, I want first the blue column to be highlighted, and if we're at the end of the blue column, I want to go to the green one. So, in order to do that, we need to have um, groups, so you can say, for example, uh, focus traversal group, and then we need to add one here as well. And then we would just go to the first list, because this list contains all the focus nodes in its children, and it would go through that first, and then to the next focus traversal group, go through that one, and then on so on, and so on. So if we're at the end of the list, and we press tap again, then we will go to the first one, because it's the, uh, the first one of the second list, because it's the second one in line. Um, but we can still use our arrow keys, going to the next one, uh, the one above it, uh, left, right, up, down, um, every, everything that you want. Um, and just have yeah, the orientation that, that you would like. Okay. okay, okay. Um, and you could also, for example, say, okay, I want to use um, focus order, where you could say, okay, no, I want to start with the uh, green list first and then go to the blue list. So in this case we would use, uh, what was it again, I think order double, so uh, focus order, universal order, yes, and then numeric, yes, one. Uh, so. This is uh, zero index based focus order, and then the order. Uh, no, it was focus traversal uh, traversal order, and then the order would start from zero. And if you try this, then you would see that it would just go from left to right because it's not, uh, not working correctly as we expect, because we need to have a um, traversal group here, where we need to set the policy on how the traversal group needs to uh, animate or needs to, needs to happen. So by default, um, it's reading order, so from left to right and from uh, left, uh, right to left, if you're in languages that support that, uh, but we can change it to order traversal policy. Uh, and let's see if I missed something. We're first starting with the green list. 
if we're through the green list, then we would go to the blue list. So in some UIs, you want to have a, yeah, a different reading order or dif different order for focus than you want for reading your UI. So this is important maybe if you have yeah, some specific thing that you need to, need to do for uh, accessibility where you want to have a list item that needs to be read first and then the rest of the UI, then you, for example, could use this as well. Uh, but you need to make sure that it, needs, that it is the same on, on yeah, other platforms that support focus as well. So take that into account. Uh, then if we go to the final demo. Okay. And then we have a TV application that looks more like a TV application than the other ones. Uh, but here again, you can go through the, the items. You can select one uh, as well with the, with the arrows. Uh, and as you can see here, this is a fully custom widget where we have focus. So this is something that we need to do ourselves on how, yeah, how you want to have it handled. So what we need to do here uh, is create a stateful widget because we have state for each widget. Each widget will have a focus state or not focus state. Uh, so for that, we need the focus node that I talked about earlier. So in the init state, we would just create the focus node and we would add I would recommend doing that at a debug label where you say, okay, this is my list item um, with this name. So if you have issues, it's easier to debug with the debug uh, label because focus can be hard if you have a very complex UI. Uh, so having the debug label enabled from the start will yeah, save a lot of time in the future just for debugging purposes. Uh, so after that, you need to add a uh, focus uh, changed listener. So just adding a listener uh, that will rebuild the, this specific widget. Uh, and based on that, we would use the focus node with the has focused um, just to show a different border. So by default, we will show no border. If it has focus, we will show a yellow border. And we're using an animated container to animate between the two states. Just for the border alone, uh, you could use anything that you want, um, but this is the, just basically the way how you, uh, you would write it, this yourself. Uh, so if you look at the implementation then, and it would just animate, and you see here, in this case, the, the images become, become a little bit smaller. And that's just the case because we, yeah, just said, okay, if you don't have focus, then you don't need a border. So that's the difference between, between the size, but you can just fix that by adding a transparent border or, or something like that as well. Uh, but I like this, this, uh, this animation. So let's see what we need to make a settings pane. So the same as we have for the settings in Android. So let's try to create something like this, just to, to animate with the focus scopes. Um, so let's see. Uh, so in the home screen, we would have, for the, for the, for, for the start, we would have a screen uh, focus scope node. And that is just wrapped around the movie list, the TV show list. And then if there are other screens in the future, then we will by default add just a size box. And that, this will have a focus scope. And the focus scope needs a node, and the node will then be the uh, screen focus scope node that we created earlier. Uh, and then by default, we will autofocus because we want to have some selected UI um, when the application starts up. And after that, we can just play around with the application. Uh, so by default, if we set autofocus to true, it will just get the first element that is focus wall and will request focus to that item. And in our case, that's the movie list screen with the selected, uh, selected movie item that is here. But we need to enable autofocus on that as well. So focus is a widget from Flutter, from the Flutter framework, where you can say this needs to have autofocus. 
And then, of course, we need to also set the autofocus in the first item if it's loaded. So your UI will not be available from the first, uh, from the first draw of your first frame. Uh, because, yeah, for example, if you're getting uh, data from an API, you need to wait maybe two or three seconds, and after that, you will land on the screen. But at that time, the focus for the first widget will already be, already be there, so you need to have the autofocus on the first index added here. Uh, in my case, I just have a, a static list of the movies, but in a real-world scenario, you would, uh, you would need this as well. So let's see how this goes. And if I break something, I need to open the application, of course. So let's restart. Yeah, and it, let's start here. Restart. And it would just select the first item in the list because you auto-focused on the first item of the list. So right now we have the first step of the, the movie screen, but we also want to have the other containers as well. So in, and you see here for the focus scope node, we also have a debug label. Uh, and this is just so we can know if it's in a specific focus scope node or in another one. Uh, it's also important to always dispose your focus nodes because otherwise you can yeah, get memory leaks if it still needs to be accessed somewhere and cannot be uh, collected. So let me just uncomment this. And let's go through it. So the uh, focus scope node is not yet initialized because we added it after a hot reload. So let's do another restart to create the focus scope node as well. Uh, so right now you can see that we're not opening the, the pane or the, the settings pane and it's behind the settings pane that we, we are drawing. So we still need to update the on key and add padding. So, oh. so we need to add padding to the yeah to the to the screen itself, just to move the screen a little bit to the side, so we are not drawing anything behind the settings pane. Uh, and then we ha want to handle left or right key presses if we go if we uh, are at the end of a specific uh, specific focus scope node item uh, and in this case we would here uh, check the raw key up event because you will always have two events a down event and an up event uh, when I was preparing the presentation I did not check this one and then you will always go two steps to the next one or to the previous one uh, so it's important to always check that it's one of the two depends on how you want to handle it uh, and then check if it's the key that you want to have it entered. Uh, and then you can say, okay, I want to focus on the next item on the left or the next item on top, or it's something that you can choose yourself and then say, okay, if there's nothing there, then we want to open the menu. Uh, so let's see if everything's working. And now I'm just using left and right. So left will open it because there's nothing on the right. If I press right, it will close. There's nothing on the left. It will, uh, it will open the, the settings pane here as well. So right now we can have focus here. We can go up and down. Uh, and then we can say, okay, I want to go to the TV, um, TV screen. And it's just yeah, a builder, so we will show a different screen. And then we have a mystery button here. It says, okay, but what about iOS or Apple TV? Uh, and some people who went to the talk um, on Fluttercon, at Fluttercon as well, about the Apple TV, already saw my face probably. 
Uh, but I have a couple of handy links. So I created a package to dun, 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 to do to do this. So these list items are just native Android, um, but you need to populate it with data, and the data needs to come from your Flutter application or your native application. Uh, so I created a, a package just to, to show this. Of course, this is from, from Google, but uh, for, from YouTube, but you can just populate with any data if you're using the, the package there as well. Um, then there are a couple of uh, how to get started, and then yeah, how focus actually is documented is, is there as well. So what, it, what about Apple TV and tvOS? So yeah, there is a custom uh, Flutter engine uh, for that because yeah, uh, tvOS is not iOS, it's not macOS, it's a different target, but it's kind of the same. So yeah, Alex, uh, Alexander uh, did a talk about that FlutterCon, so if you're really interested in that, Take a look at that as well. Um, but basically what he is saying is yeah, you need to create your custom uh, engine for release, for uh, profiling, for debugging, um, just to make it work. They did some changes to the, to the UI or to the, to the framework itself, just to make yeah, everything work with, uh, with Apple TV. Uh, and they also wrote a blog post they have some demos as well, where you can just get the compiled version that you need to use. Um, but it, in the end, it just works. Um, but in the future, they want to have a custom embedder that needs to be able to, to access Flutter uh, or build on, on tvOS with a custom embedder instead of altering the full engine. Um, so this is what they're using it. And they're, they did it for... Um, Liberty Global, which is the company above Telenet, and uh, lost the other one. Uh, but yeah, they're a pretty big, pretty big company, and they're also using using Flutter on other TV platforms as well. Uh, Tizen, for example, uh, WebOS, I think, uh, as well. So uh, yes, this was my talk about uh, Android TV. If you have any questions, shoot. Yes, yeah, indeed, it just scrolls automatically. When I started with using it for, for a personal application, I had to write all the travel to the next one, to the previous one, to the left one myself, and that has been fixed since, and I've migrated my full code base to that, uh, but now yeah, you can just use it like any other Flutter application that has a scroll view. Normally, I think, Maybe I did not show it, but. Uh, so it will just go to the next one. The um, most difficult part is getting the padding right in your scrolling UI. Uh, because you can't scroll to a part of your uh, UI or widget element, but you maybe want to have padding on top. So let's say, for example, okay, I'm at the end of this list, but I want to have uh, 60 padding at the end. Right now, maybe there is 60 padding, but you can't see it because there's no focus there. So you need to implement that yourself. I think uh, Nicola, who worked, at, uh, worked with us um, previously, built a traversal policy, who just added padding at the end, or on top or, or below. Uh, and then you can also have overlap uh, UI elements that can have focus in between and but yeah I did not check how, how it actually works but you can you can do it but for me it was not a hard requirement if it just worked and it played I was fine right thanks <laughs> 